Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Our today's topic of discussion that is the maintenance of flexible pavement. Now before starting in detail, let me introduce what is road maintenance. The pavement maintenance. Pavement maintenance is the one of the most important component of our road system or the transportation system. It involves the assessment of road condition, diagnosis of the problems, and adopting the most appropriate maintenance steps. Even if the highways are well designed even the pavements are well designed they may require maintenance due to its less designed life now there are various types of failure that occur in the pavement which ranges from minor to major distress and from all these components from all these uh, changes or the failures we have to decide that whether we have to main, we have to provide the maintenance or repair or rehabilitation for that pavement or else we need to reconstruct the pavements the next is the objective of pavement maintenance the basic objective of maintenance are to maintain and operate the pavement in a manner so that the first that it provide comfort convenience and safety to the public the second concept is the investment in roads bridges is preserved the aesthetic and compatibility of pavement with the environment is preserved and the fourth objective is the necessary expenditure of resources is accomplished with continuing emphasis on the economy of the country the economy on the transportation systems so these are our main objectives to do the main pavement maintenance the next topic is the general causes of our pavement failure why this pavement goes failure what are the reasons of this failure so the first reason that is the poor soil this is the most common problem in the pavement design because we are using the soil basically in the subgrade and subgrade is the foundation of the pavement yes the most common soil problem is a high water table if the water table is so much high it will it makes the subgrade soil more moisturized and more clay and that clay soil decrease the strength of that subgrade so if the soil condition or the geological formation of the particular ground is not accounted for at the time of the construction a high water table will erode the soil and eventually this poor soil will lead to the pavement failure so whenever we apply the road we must check the soil condition okay the next cause that leads to pavement failure that is inferior material quality if the material that is laid on the ground is not in a good condition or it is not good enough that will lead to severe defects and the failure of the pavement so whichever the material we are using for the pavement structure whether it is soil it is aggregate or it is bituminous material those materials should be in good quality the next is improper geometry 
due to improper geometry of the road lots of the factors that may arise which keep the pavement in deformation if that geometry is much uneven and if it have the variation in the geo geological condition that will arise a lot of problems during the construction and even after the construction that may fail the pavement or they may deform the pavement so the geography or the geometry of that particular land should be proper the next is the overloading of the vehicles whenever we are designing the pavement we have to calculate the maximum load capacity of that particular pavement if there will be a um, overloading on that particular stretch that will lead to the pavement failure a vehicle is said to be heavily loaded when it is being loaded more than its carrying capacity in the same way the pavement is considered or it's said to be heavily loaded when it is having the more number of vehicles that is designed for that particular pavement so according to the irc the maximum wheel load for the standard axle that is 80 kN for that particular pavement design due to heavy movement of the vehicles or the overloaded vehicles or we can say the increasing in traffic volumes this particular factor shows the distresses on that particular pavement and this distress will lead the pavement to the failure the next that is the environmental factor the environmental factor includes heavy rainfall soil erosion high water table snowfall frost section etc if we are constructing the road in the cold weather there may be the chances of snowfall and the frost action and in that particular site if we are constructing a uh, pavement in the heavy rainfall area okay so where the what rising of water table will be high and that's why it will erode the soil so there may be the possibility of soil erosion there may be the possibility of water table hiring because the that particular rain water will store in the ground and that will rise the water table okay so this environmental factors also affect the pavement failure sometimes we have seen that in the monsoon season there may be a lot of pavement failure in our country okay so this is the reason that it will change the geological formation in the ground and it create the pavement failure and it leads to the pavement failure the next is inadequate drainage the improper drainage resulting in stagnation of water in the subgrade which could be the main reason of the pavement failure in future so these are the main causes of general pavement failure okay this affect on uh, rigid pavement also and this affect on flexible pavement also so these are the general causes of pavement failures and further we will see in detail that what are the causes of uh, flexible pavement and what are the causes of rigid pavement failure but these are the general pavement failures the next topic that is the classification of road maintenance we have seen that there are pavement failure these are the causes so how and what are how we uh, classify the road pavement the road pavements are classified into three categories the, the first one that is the routine maintenance now this routine maintenance includes 
the filling up of potholes, the patch repairs, maintenance of shoulder and the cross slope. Also, it includes the cleaning of side drains, cleaning of culverts and the maintenance of road signs and road arboriculture. So, if you see the defects such as mentioned here, so that will come into the routine maintenance. Okay, so we have to uh, maintain the drainage, we have to maintain the roadside arboriculture, we have to maintain the side by uh, road signs. Okay, so these are the routine maintenance that comes in daily basis. Okay, then after the next maintenance that is periodic maintenance. So this periodic maintenance includes renewal of bearing course of pavement, renewal of top surface of gravel roads and metal roads or the preventive maintenance of various items. So this all includes in the periodic maintenance. That means that uh, renewal of wearing course occurs once a year. So this is the periodic that, that you have to maintain year by year or we can say in the periodical time that one year or after two years we have to resurface that pavement. So that comes into the periodical repairs or periodical maintenance. The third classification of maintenance that is special repairs that includes the strengthening of pavement structure, reconstruction of the pavement, widening of roads, repairs of damages caused by the floods or the construction of road island and the road signs. So these are the special repairs. If you have to uh, give extra strength to the pavement structure or you need to reconstruct that pavement or you are supposed to uh, work for the widening of roads. So such works comes into the special repairs and this is one of the classification of road maintenance. So after that, there are some planning system approach to the maintenance plan. You are planning the maintenance process and how you reach at that particular goal that we will discuss in this topic. So in the first step of planning of maintenance operation, we will go to the step one and that is the physical condition. So in the first step of the planning of maintenance, the evaluation of existing pavement uh, in terms of physical condition, structural capacity and the roughness to be examined. For this purpose, the condition surveys may be undertaken for the visual assessment of the pavement, which cover not only the type but also the magnitude of the distress and its location. Apart from visual surveys, the pavement surface evaluation based on riding quality, based on the skid resistance should be also form the basis for taking the maintenance decision. Necessary information about the routine maintenance will be readily available as the maintenance staff are expected to be continuously in touch with the physical condition of the road. From this, you will get the data of routine maintenance. Now, however, for the periodical renewal requirements, or the long term maintenance strategy, this condition survey should be carried out at a fixed frequency. It is desirable that at least two conditional surveys are conducted on each stretch of road at every year or at least after the monsoon season. So it will not lead to or it will not cause the major problem on that particular pavement. Generally, the condition surveys are carried out from a vehicle that traveling at a low speed. The data should be recorded in the kilometer and 
it is desirable that this visual surveys are carried out by an experienced engineer at a responsible level so that you will get the accurate data based on condition evaluation the causes for the various defects that observed should be examined in detail and then a decision should be taken whether to initiate a particular maintenance activity or to go in for more detailed investigation to determine the rehabilitation needs or not in precise way once the overall maintenance plan has been drawn up the attention should be given to the proper organization and the management of the whole program that including deployment of various resources that is kind of main power or the material and the equipments now for each maintenance activity the work at site should be carefully controlled so that the optimum output and the quality can be achieved so this is how we approach the maintenance planning process first we do the physical survey on the physical basis on the physical condition and the structural capacity or the roughness of the pavement we have to evaluate the existing pavement condition and to in to check in detail the condition survey should be performed which will give you the type of defects and the detailed information of the pavement failure okay and after checking that conditional survey by visual examination of that pavement final decision should be taken whether we have to reconstruct the road or we can repair or rehabilitate that particular pavement so this is what the pavement planning procedure is said okay with this i am concluding this lecture thank you so much students for your kind attention i hope you understand the importance of maintenance of the flexible pavement we'll see you in the next lecture thank you